Hello and welcome to this Formlabs webinar. This is a shortened version of the original broadcast. If you'd like to view the content in full, please click on the link below. Good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, not nice to be here. Hopefully, we're going to show you some things that we manufacture to show some of the processes where we use the pill, we use the Formlabs in collaboration with the rest of the design team here to come up with some cool car parts. So, yeah, my name is Tom Watkins. So, I'm one of the uh, design engineers here at Forge Motorsport. So let's go to the next slide, please, now. So there's kind of two sections effectively to the business. You've got Forge Motorsport and you've got Forge Engineering. Um, Forge Motorsport might be the one that most people are aware of if you've heard of us beforehand. Um, and Forge Engineering is effectively the bit on the side um, where we use the same CNC machines, same fabricators um, to go through and do just general engineering work effectively. So I'd like to go to the next slide, thank you. So the agenda, what I'm going to be discussing through. So a little bit about ourselves a little bit of background and then I'll go into some examples of how we use our 3D scan or scanners, the PIL2 and PIL2S. And then we'll go through into 3D printing, which will be the Form 3L, which is what we use. And then we'll leave it a little bit on a design development workflow on the Toyota Yaris GR. Vehicle that some of you might have heard of seeing, there's been a lot of uh, talk about it, as it when it came out from last year. Um, and we've done a few little bits for it and we'll be talking about one in particular, which gives a really nice kind of run through how we used both the scanning, CAD to printing, prototyping, and then um, getting out into market for people to, people to enjoy. Can you go to the next slide, please, Dan? So as I said, we'll start off with a little bit about ourselves. So yeah, so we're founded in 1996, uh, a third generation family business based in uh, Gloucestershire in the UK. Um, effectively, what we're here to do is to create world-class products for, for vehicles and deliver good customer service, outstanding customer service, um, we've got off, we offer like a lifetime guarantee on all our products, no hassle service promise obviously but because of the, the ability we put into the, the, the design process. We know that the parts we can put onto your cars are going to be top quality. We've um, got set the RC CNC machine shop, um, highly skilled team of dedicated engineers and fabricators um, and the Forge brand the products go worldwide. We've got Forge which is the main brand, we've then also got sister companies of Forge USA Forge Asia, based out of Orlando and Taiwan. Um, and one of the other sides of the business, obviously, we do a, a lot of collaborations within motorsport. Um, I'll be discussing a little bit about touring cars, um, which will be one of the technical partnerships we have with, with one of the teams. Obviously, as, as, as you mentioned just there, we've also got a lot of links with other forms of motorsport as well, Rallycross, um, Rally in Le Mans, F1 mentioned there as well. Yeah, we've um, We've helped out a lot of different motorsports over, over the years. So if you're going to go into our first example, we've done. So we'll start off a little bit about 3D scanning. Um, so as I said, we've got a PIL2 and a PIL2S. We've got both of those scanners in-house, which we use for a vast uh, variety of different projects. So this here is Navarati redefined 964911. Um, redefined because it's now electric, which asks questions in itself, but I'll leave that for another time. Um, what the guys came over to us for was just a little bit of scanning. So what you can see there is me sort of going through the process of using one of the scanners on the back end of that 964. So what they effectively needed was really good quality scan to come out so they could then look into um, creating some molding, creating some further processes from it from there. So I'll do a little bit of a chat about the process I've sort of used here. Um, so you can see I'm using developer spray and that sort of right hand side image that was used on the, the louver section of the back just to make sure the scanner can pick it up a little bit better. It's a white light scanner. The best way to describe it is effectively it's a QR code being shined onto the surface and it's bouncing back, it's reading it. So developer spray can just help it pick it up. Um, again, further to that, you can see also that light bar at the back in the middle. It's not picked that up at all, so I didn't put any spray in it because we didn't need it. We're going to be focusing on the panels in this. That image in that top left hand side what you can also see here is a bit of difference in the colours. So what we're showing there is actually that blue is the scan data, and that green where you can see the, uh, the that sort of mesh looking is actually what's referred to as an auto surface. That's one of the fantastic features that you can do inside the PIL software is you can turn STL effectively when mesh cloud data into surfaces. Those surfaces you can then export straight into SolidWorks into whatever CAD system you're using. So that's been a massive help out of many different projects, including this one. Move to the next slide, please. So I did mention we uh, have got some collaborations with different motorsports, um, including touring cars. 
So this is Team Accelerate. Uh, I don't know if we've got any British Touring Car fans out there, um, but this is Tom Ingram's um, race car that won the first first round of the series last weekend. So obviously we do a little bit of work for. Sadly, I can't show too much information on the exact parts that we manufactured for it. They like to try and keep that under wraps. Obviously, they're uh, doing doing pretty well. They want to keep as many things hidden away as they possibly can do. So you go to the next slide, I can show you a little bit of a trick feature with the, uh, the pill scanner itself, which is using its HDR camera to actually pick up on the, the surface itself and project the images across, as you can see there, yeah, so it's just literally picking up and that's showing the video on the left hand side of just scanning it in, a couple of dots to get it targeted, and it's just doing all the hard work for us. And that image on the right hand side is literally what it produces. Let's move to the next slide please, Dan. So the last one we're going to show is a little bit more from the forge engineering side of things. Uh, so this gym CNC machine, um, when the customer was going through and doing tool changes on it, there happened to be it on the machine itself, which is costing them time and time's money on this one. So what we effectively did is we scanned the whole area where the tool was actually going on to, and then what we could do is we could pick up from that scan data um, the locations where the pins are going to get uh, lock into. We could then replicate that in the CAD produce um, a billet tooling so they could do their tool changes off the machine, as I said, saving them time, which is a massive thing for this customer, uh, which really helped them out. So yeah, also you can see kind of the video showing the uh, what was actually being scanned, going from what was on the machine to on the uh, on the screen, and those images on the right side just give you a bit of an, uh, an understanding of exactly what you, what is what it's bringing over. So if you'd like to go to the next slide, please. So yeah, we'll move on to the Formlabs element, the, the, the 3D printing. Um, so this is giving a little bit of a slight insight into one of the products we're going to have uh, released some of this year, which is going to be an induction kit for the VW Mark 8 Golf R, which also fits for the Mark 7, along with Audi S3, so obviously that engine and that chassis platform shared across a few different things. So as I've just sort of mentioned there, it's fitting across a lot of different vehicles. So what we need to be able to do is to produce a, a decent size uh, 3D printer, as you can see, that we could then test across a few different vehicles, get it tested for fitment, see what it's like for um, getting into the car as well as actually being used. Um, so we run a few little tests on it just to see how it's going. And then obviously from there, what we can do is we can look into manufacturing and machine and tooling to then get it produced out of carbon fiber, which is what this one's going to be in particular. So as you can see, it's a pretty decent sized print that was done in, I believe we did that in four sections, um, which is including a se separate element in the back, which is for the cone filter that fits inside that. So that there is going to be the, the induction kit, which sort of walks backwards into the turbo behind it, which you can see from that blue silicon. So one of the main things we're trying to do here is effectively get that airflow in as smooth as possible um, and try and get a little bit more power out of the vehicle, um, which is aim of the game. Could you go to the next slide, please? So I kind of mentioned that airflow there um, and showed one of the different products, but we use the 3D printer from everything from big to small. Um, so what we've got here is a turbo inlet adapter for a, again, another product that's going to be released very soon. This small adapter you can see that's been printed out of Tough 2000 um, that's currently fitted on the vehicle in question um, as it goes through its rigorous testing process, which we put it through. So that testing goes from everything from just general day-to-day -day usage, um, seeing how it can um, with, with Stan having this part on the, on the vehicle, and also we'll take across the dyno testing. Because obviously dyno testing is a massive part of, of what we're doing, because we want to make sure that the vehicle is putting in those power runs, we're seeing it peak performance, we can see if we make any brake horsepower or torque gains. Um, and this one in particular is um, it's a very complex design. Um, we're the only, we will be the only company out there that's um, relating to the PCB. Um, breather, which is what that effectively that area there is doing. Everyone else is blanking off. We can get a little bit more power out of it by having a little bit trick uh, trick part in there, which is what this print's been able to allow us to go through and do some testing with. If you go to the next slide, please. I think we'll leave it in kind of like a, I guess, a middle ground print between the uh, the large one for the induction kit and the, uh, the, the small little breather print there that we did. Um, so you'll find with a lot of different vehicles, the mass, uh, the mass airflow sensors, uh, the, they're going to be very important to how well the induction kits are going to work. So what we've got here is effectively three different sections that we can go and we can attach to the, the main um, airbox and do some tests with. So obviously we can move around that mass 
sensor, see if position is making much of a difference, see if you can eke out some better performance, um, because you'll find if your mass is not in the right position, you can have like a, a lumpy idle for the best way to describe it. You turn your car on, it's going to not sound or feel fantastic. So I've been able to quickly test this, and I have a few different variations we can do to, again, massively important part of the business for us. So this example here is um, an upper airbox lift. We can fit a cone filter inside, fit that to the vehicle, run our testing, as I said. So this one was actually done in draft resin to start off with. Um, we tend to use either draft or tough 2000 because we find it's a pretty fantastic material to draft. You can print super quick. I know four months have got some great case studies out there sort of explaining how long it takes for a print to print within comparison. Um, and then the tough 2000 we use for all the other jobs like that, uh, that breather print we just showed you there. Like I said, that was done in top 2000, because you know that realistically we can put it on a car, we can leave it on there for a fair while and um, not run into any issues. Obviously, the engine base do get hot. Uh, we're not going to put any top 2000 parts on the turbo or anything, but uh, we can have it near enough um, and yeah, get some great results out of it. If you'd like to move to the next slide, please, now. So we'll leave it off with a, a little run through of just going from off the air 3L, moving across onto a vehicle itself. This is again another turbo inlet adapter. Um, as I said, what we're trying to do is just eke out that, that performance and airflow. Um, you'll find that a lot, of, a lot of OEM parts are going to be trying to do is not necessarily always create power, but try and uh, meet noise regulations. This is something we've, we've been seeing over the past few years, really um, just increasing more and more with more regulations coming out each year, kind of limiting what manufacturers can actually do. So what we'll try and do is just make the best of both worlds Customers want to hear a bit more engine noise. Customers want to get a bit more power. Little things like these inlet adapts can have a great, um, great impact. So this adapter, what we can do is effectively, again, top 2000 for this, print it off, test it fit. As you can see, it fits perfectly and smoothly going into the turbo. Um, we can then work on some silicon from there, work on an induction kit, see what we can do, run some tests. This obviously wouldn't be kept on to the vehicle for testing due to the temperatures being literally on the turbo itself. But let's say this costs five pounds to print effectively around about that. Um, we can get that print to get it test fitted, confirm size and confirm that BCD is correct. Um, make sure it's all those little other things, getting into position is going to be all right. And then we can go and um, use one of our CNC machines to manufacture the part from there to actually go through testing. So we're just ensuring that we're um, not taking up too much time or any wastage there really. Thank you for tuning in to this webinar preview from Formlabs. To view the content in full, please click on the link below. Alternatively, if you'd like to get more information on our products and services, then please visit our website.